Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the Flourish channel. Today we're going to be covering a game that has been in development for almost 5 years now and will be releasing next month in April. That game is from Mojang Studios themselves, Minecraft Legends. Now the reason I'm speaking about this game and not something else is because we've all at least once in our lives have played Minecraft, whether it be one time at a friend's house or grinded out several months in a survival world. But even if you haven't played the game, you probably have seen or heard about it at some point in your life. So in this video, we're going to be going over everything you need to know before you buy Minecraft Legends release on April 18th for $39.99 USD so that everyone is on the same page with everything that has been released so far by Mojang and maybe some predictions of what is to come in the future. But now with the intro out of the way, let's get to the game starting with the plot. The game takes place obviously in the Minecraft universe, the same as the original game, but in this game, the Nether is invading the overworld with its corruption and with it brings along the Piglins, which will be leading the invasion on the overworld. Now what are Piglins you may be asking? Well in vanilla Minecraft, there are neutral mobs that are found within the Nether that are hostile towards you unless you are equipped with at least one piece of gold armor. But in this game, it doesn't work like that as it seems these mobs will always be hostile towards you since you won't be using any armor for yourself since you the player won't be fighting. You'll actually be making other mobs around you fight for you by using different abilities that you are given at the start of the game which we'll be getting into a bit later. From what we've seen and heard so far from Mojang, the plot is to defend the world from the piglin invasion and to try to send them back to the nether to rid the world of the corruption that the piglins have brought with them. But from the announcement and official trailers that have been released, it seems like we're gonna be able to go to the nether and face off against the big boss of all the piglins that have been sending them to attack the overworld, which seems like it's gonna be a part of the end game. But we may be visiting the nether many times throughout this game for different reasons, which is why they would probably show it in the trailer, since it wouldn't really make sense to show it if it's some big spoiler for the plot, or it'll be the only time we enter the nether. But this is all speculation at this point, so we're gonna have to wait to get the full picture of the plot and the story of the game. Now let's get to those items that I mentioned. You'll be getting at the start of the game to start off your journey. Once you enter the game, you'll be spawned in at the Well of Fate. Now, according to the game devs, this is one of the most important structures in the game regarding to the story, as you'll be returning to this place several times throughout the campaign to make some very important friends in their words. But now for the items that you'll be given at the start of the game when you're placed at the Well of Fate. The first item you'll be given is the Flame of Creation, which no, it doesn't actually allow you to create any buildings and whatnot, as you would think on the first hearing of the name, as I thought, but it actually allows you to create spawners that allow you to bring other mobs into the world to make your allies. I'll get to what mobs you can actually spawn in a bit, but let's get to the other two items before I explain this mechanic. The second item that you'll receive at the start of the game is known as the Banner of Courage, which is a banner that you can wave to befriend the mobs that you come across throughout your adventures and the ones that you spawn in using the Flame of Creation. This banner is also used to direct mobs you befriend to attack as you can see in this clip. The player can actually choose in specific where they want the mobs to actually go using the Banner of Courage. You can also choose whether or not you want the mobs to stop following you since once you wave that banner, the mobs will be following you at all times no matter how far ahead you are from them. They will find a way to get to your position no matter what. So if you want to drop the current mobs you have and bring on new ones, just stop waving the flag and you're good to go. And for the final item that we'll be getting is a loot. And the only information that we have received for this item is from the devs themselves within the presentation and that is once you play the loot, you bring allays into the world. Now for those of you that have played Minecraft Vanilla before, you know that allays in that game work in the sense of if you give them an item, it will then collect copies of that said item if it's laying on the ground. It will not mine on its own because that's your job. But in Legends, the allays work differently as there are two different types of allays, blue and yellow. The yellow allays in this game are able to build things for you. For example, as you can see on screen right now, the player selects a ramp in their hotbar, as you can see in the indication on the left, and uses multiple of them to create a bridge across the way. And as you can see, the allays begin to build the bridge for the player. Now for the blue ones, they work a bit differently in this game compared to vanilla Minecraft. As in this game, the blue allays do still gather materials for you, but instead of you giving them an item and collecting only that certain material, you can tell them to clear an area on their own and they'll do it, which means they can mine on their own as well, which is pretty cool. As seen on screen right now, the player asks the LAs to collect wood from the trees and they do exactly that. And while you continue to explore, the items go directly into your inventory. But if you look to the left, it shows you how many LAs you actually get to use. As seen here, the player only has five LAs to use at a time. There has been no confirmation as to what the maximum amount of LAs that you'll be able to acquire throughout the game by using the loot, but I think it's gonna be more than five since the end of the game is probably gonna need a lot more help than five LAs, so we'll have to see once the game releases. Now in regards to the mob that you'll be able to spawn and befriend, you're gonna be able to befriend any mob that comes in your way since in this game, the only mobs that are gonna be hostile towards you are the piglins, which you won't be able to befriend with the banner of courage, but the mobs like creepers and zombies, for example, you will be able to befriend, which is pretty weird to say, I can't lie. But as for the spawners you'll be able to create with the flame of creation, these aren't confirmed to be the only 
only spawners you'll be able to create, but only the ones that have been shown so far. So as you can see here, there have been only seven spawners that have been shown off as of yet, which consist of cobblestone golems, plank golems, mossy golems, grindstone golems, creepers, zombie villagers, and I think that's a skeleton spawner, but I'm not sure. But as you can see, you're able to spawn all these hostile mobs that are made to harm you in vanilla Minecraft, but are allies in this game, which is again pretty weird to say and see honestly. But one mob that I have no clue how is spawned or found is the first of stones. The only gameplay that we have seen of this mob thus far is in the presentation that Mojang did for it months ago. But the first of stones, as seen here, is pretty powerful as it scoops up stones from the ground and throws it to the portal slash enemies and deals massive damage. There may be a spawner for this through the flame of creation as well, but as of now, there is no information about it released as of yet. But now that we've finally gotten past the basics of the game, let's get to the gameplay and talk about what the main goal of this game even is. So as said before, the piglins have invaded the overworld through the multiple portals that they have entered through. So logically, we're going to have to destroy these portals in order to stop the corruption from spreading and the piglins from actually arriving. But the only issue is that these portals are surrounded in a base built by piglins themselves. So yeah, your main goal in the game as seen so far is to find these bases, which I assume the story will guide you to, and destroying the portals within them by fighting your way through everything the piglins throw at you. One of the buildings that have been shown off to be pretty useful in these battles is the arrow tower, which you can get the LAs to build for you as mentioned before. These towers will, as stated in the name, shoot arrows at enemies that come within its range. So it'll be pretty helpful to get damage in from a long distance. I'm not sure how much damage it actually does or how fast it shoots as that was not mentioned anywhere. So I'm just going to assume that it doesn't deal the most damage in the world as it's a long range building, but it will shoot fast to balance the fact that it doesn't deal a lot with each arrow. And again, this is speculation, not a confirmation from Mojang themselves. Also within the world, there will be a lay chest that will spawn at random in different areas in the world. And once you open them, it'll be filled with quote unquote gifts that the LA's put in there, which means it's a randomly generated chest with randomly generated things inside of it. Speed wheat and bounce cap will also be things found in the world as well, which are pretty helpful as speed wheat are basically patches of grass that give you speed boost once you touch them and bounce caps are mushroom looking plants that give you a jump boost once you walk over them. No clue how long these effects will last for because I tried looking for indicators on screen in the gameplay release and I couldn't find anything. So if I did miss it, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to check it out. And the final gameplay feature within Minecraft Legends is that there will be co-op and PvP modes within the game. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me tell you. Co-op will be mainly used for the campaign as you'll be able to play out the campaign with up to four players as seen in the presentation gameplay released by Mojang. But it isn't confirmed whether the more players you have in the game, the more difficult the game becomes as four players going up against one piglin base will be pretty easy if this wasn't the case. But we'll have to see once the game releases. PvP on the other hand is an online game mode which is up to eight players that can join a lobby with them splitting into two teams of four on a blue and orange team. The goal of PvP is to establish your own base and be able to destroy the other team's base first. The idea is a lot similar to the campaign where you have to destroy the piglins portal to destroy it. But in this game mode, you have other players building their own bases and armies to try to destroy your base as well. Piglins will also be playing a factor in this game mode as well since they still exist in this world and they'll be trying to destroy your base at the same time. So that's going to be a pretty interesting mechanic to play with as you can probably time your attacks on the enemy at the same time that piglins decide to attack their base to deal more damage to them. But as I've been saying the entire video, we'll have to wait until the release to see for ourselves. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. Hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope this made you more excited for this game with all the new mobs, mechanics, and honestly, the look of a whole new Minecraft experience. This game will be a very different take on the game we know and love and I hope this game is as good as the devs are making it out to be. This has been everything you need to know before you buy Minecraft Legends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you all in the next video.